in the previous lesson, we took an elephant and we lightened some areas and we darkened others with very careful application of brush strokes. Now we're going to do brush strokes in this too, but this image, which incidentally happens to be in your working folder as 429 underscore 298814.jpg from the happy people at photospin.com. It's got a little bit more saturation in those mid-tone colors than I need for the device I'm going out to. It's blowing out my color range. I need to soften those areas up, not lighten them. I need to remove some of the color, desaturate. Now that takes us to, of course, our sponge tool right here. Now, as with all destructive editing, I would recommend you do this with a layer or a copy, I should say. So over here we have background, press control if you're on Windows, command if you're on a Mac, and the letter J, and work on that copy, and we'll call this sponge. Okay, we got that done. Let's come back over here. Sponge tool is selected. We are on the desaturate mode, but that's way too much flow. And don't forget something about flow. Flow is aggressive. It keeps working as you move. The more you move, the more it does. So there's a little bit more technique here in watching how you move your brush around the image. I want to remove a lot of the desaturation, actually most of it, from her face and from her hand. So I'm going to use my left and right bracket keys, and I'm going to get a brush that's about no wider than her wrist, about like that. Now for flow, way too much. Let's take that down to about somewhere between 15 and 20%. Let's do 15%. Now I'm using a tablet, so I do have these options on. I don't want to influence vibrance. I just want saturation. So if I come over here and I begin moving, now remember, the more you move over an area, the more it desaturates, so you have to be careful. And I'm going to get right about here, and I'm just going to start moving around the image. And again, I'm concentrating on her face and her hand right there. Now, any time you want to check it out, all you got to do is come over here and click. And as you can see, I've removed very subtly some of that saturation on her face so it won't blow out my color range on my output device. Now, if you want to add, you do the opposite. For example, maybe you want to brighten up her eyes a little bit. What we could do is switch over our sponge tool right here to saturate. And I'm going to keep the flow at about 15%, but I need a smaller brush, obviously. And maybe just get in here. Remember, the more you do this, the more it does. You have to be careful. And just a little bit more in here. Kind of brighten those eyes up just a little. And anytime you want to check it out, just turn that on and off before you say, I love this, and commit yourself by putting these two images together. If it's a print, make sure you try some tests, see if you like it. Things sometimes look a whole lot different on a piece of paper than they do here on your monitor, no matter how calibrated it is. Are there other ways in Photoshop to do what we're doing? The answer to that is an obvious resounding yes. Then why are we doing these things this way? Because this is one of the few ways that we can do things like lighten and darken, dodge and burn, or sponging an area, saturate, desaturate, in a very precise, using a paintbrush way.